We've documented, and, it, and it's become part of the sort of cultural conversation around this, that some people now are really um, connecting almost exclusively through their smartphones. They don't necessarily, they aren't denied access in other places, but they are so focused on this device, and it's certainly the one device that they've lavished their resources and attention on, that they are uh, smartphone dependent. Uh, they don't have home broadband. Uh, that number is, has grown over time, and there are particular groups of people. So here I highlight, um, it's 13% of all adults, um, but it's um, uh, young adults in particular are, are more likely than others to be smartphone dependent or, or smartphone reliant. 13% um, of those in poor households are, 12% of blacks are, and 13% of Latinos are in that smartphone dependent uh, or smartphone reliant uh, category, and the number has grown over time. We've got some new data that's just in, and we're really anxious to see what's happening in this story. But it's it's clear that um, you know the smartphone is is an important tool for access, and in many cases, the, the exclusive or almost exclusive tool for it. And again, th this raises big issues about capacity. Can people do the same stuff uh, on these small screens that they can do on the big screen? And the answer, through a whole lot of uh, work that we've done, is not quite. In some cases, uh, not a lot in other cases, in part because those who are uh, smartphone dependent often are on uh, data cap uh, plans, and they're, you know, they're, they can't afford to pay for all the data they need or want. They, they don't necessarily have the Wi-Fi access that other people do uh, to, to get that data, and, so they're, they're, and they also are, are just stressed out paying their bills sometimes. Uh, especially for their connectivity, so that they're, they, they've got more breaks in their service and more breaks in the way that they can um, use these tools for, for getting ahead in life. 